Where does the Dallas Stars prospect pool rank amongst the National Hockey League? Let's find out next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast in on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. A battle of top 10 teams gets underway tonight. The Dallas Stars taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. Very excited for this matchup this evening. Of course, we will preview the Hurricanes and where the Stars can take advantage against a very good Carolina team, who they face twice this month. We'll play Shooting Star today. Let's have some fun. Which Dallas Star are you choosing to lead the way, hopefully, to a victory tonight against the Hurricanes? But first, we must begin here with the Dallas Stars prospect pool. Because The Athletic put out an article ranking the Dallas Stars in their prospect pool amongst the National Hockey League. And with the trade deadline approaching, sometimes it's nice to see what the Stars have, what they don't, and where some people fit, where some people don't, and where pieces could be used as bargaining chips, so to speak. So no better time to jump into it today. I want to thank everybody once again for joining me on Locked On Stars. Hit that notification bell never miss an episode become an every day or rocking along with me every single day it's been a ton of fun the stars are in first place in the central division right uh, by the way first place they're firing on all cylinders not necessarily coming out of all-star break hopefully they look really really good tonight today's episode is brought to you by fan duel make every moment more right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's 150 bucks if your bet wins visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started so this prospect ranking is done by scott wheeler of the athletic and he ranks every nhl organization's prospects and he puts them in number order from one to 32 the stars this season come in at number 21 they are ranked number 16 in 2023 so they have regressed five spots but they do have some very high-end talent and we've spoken about them Logan Stankoven and Maverick Borg but there's a few other names I would like to to get into and to speak a bit about as well because look we're flooded with Stankoven and Maverick Borg for good reason (laughs) they're uh, amongst the top in scoring in the American Hockey League this season, but sometimes it's uh, nice to look at some of the depth in the organization. But he does start off with a number one ranked player, and it is Logan Stankoven. He says it is one of his favorite prospects from 2021. The five foot eight Stankoven ranked 18th on my board. He was named the CHL's Player of the Year in his post draft season, 135 points in 76 regular season games and we've know what he's already done in his first season in the American Hockey League and we also got to hear a few clips of him earlier this week on Monday uh, or earlier this I guess it was last week excuse me sorry the days are all messed up it was earlier last week and he spoke about how he's staying ready for his moment and continuing to progress in Austin and the best part is he's buying in to himself becoming an all-around player, becoming a defensive zone asset on the penalty kill. We know what he can do offensively and what he can provide for a line, but can he become that 200-foot player where Pete DeBoer can trust him when he comes up? And he's really, really buying into that, and that's a great sign. Something that the Stars have not had to worry about in recent years with a lot of their prospects coming up. Look at Ty Delandria was someone like that. Thomas Harley even more recently just buying into the fact they have to become a well-rounded player if they want a coaching staff to buy into them, therefore find success in the National Hockey League. And I know Delandria isn't playing every day, but he's someone that really grinded it out 
in the American Hockey League, and he's gotten a chance. I think he should get more chances here down the stretch. Maverick Bork, of course, uh, uh, another one that uh, lit it up <laughs> before he made his way to uh, the, the Texas Stars. He says Bork gets high grades for his ability to maneuver in possession, manage the puck in control, adjust to pressure to evade checks, make skill plays out of carries. He's got great hands in traffic and around the net. He has started to show a real knack for uh, improvisation, and his one on one uh, one on one skill is flashing more consistently again. That really reminds me, or, or not reminds me, but that puts him into my head someone like Matt Duchesne, right? Really, really shifty and mobile, can stick handle in a phone booth, so to speak, and make plays and make scoring chances for himself just due to the fact that he's real shifty and he's able to evade checks that's kind of a description of how I would uh, of how you would probably describe Matt Duchesne. so I think that's really intriguing uh, and I'm not here saying he's going to be Matt Duchesne, be even better it'd be awesome if he was but I I really really like that description uh, of Maverick Bork and of course Bork and Stan Coven are a few of the prospects for the stars that I've watched in the preseason even a, a few games I- I- in Texas this year and they look really good they're ready to go the stars just have a ton of forwards they have not a lot of co- uh, lo- not a lot of cap space and uh, hey I-, I hear you down in the comment section every day that says they need to bring up the scores you're not going to hear me fight you on that you're not going to hear me fight you <laughs> um uh it- it's just not feasible right now it will be very very soon i promise they also rank lee and bishel uh at-, at number three he said he didn't love the decision for him to go back over to uh sweden uh kirsten Cairo comes in and-, and he's really interesting too he-, he also said he's one of the biggest risers in the 2022 draft Cairo. Um, is an offensive uh, attacking defenseman. He says he plays a very ambitious game. I think he'll start to reveal itself more and more time over the AHL. And, and the defenseman really intrigued me, right? Because the Stars do not have a ton of depth in that position, and they're probably going to be without Yanni Hockenpah because I think you move off of him next year. Ryan Suter will be around, but of course, the less responsibility you can put on his shoulders, the better. Who knows about the future of Niels Lundqvist? Is he going to be around come trade deadline time? That's a first round pick that maybe somebody wants to take a flyer on and see if it works somewhere else. Even though I think Lundqvist has made great strides here over the last month. Uh, a really intriguing one, somebody I have not watched a ton, I've gotten very small glimpses of, is uh, Aram uh, Minetin, uh, Minetian, excuse me, the tough one. It looks like Mietnin. It's not, uh, Minetian. Uh, he's a, a right, uh, a right-handed defenseman, uh, out of Boston college. I've not got to watch as much college hockey as I would have liked this season due to the fact that the games I cover and I'm calling games for are on Friday and Saturdays. It's the, it follows the, the uh, college schedule. So it, it's, it's a lot more, uh, a lot more challenging me, challenging for me to, uh, to watch, but uh, he's uh, on a very good Boston College team, of course. And if you don't know, Boston College is just littered with like three top 15 prospects <laughs> uh, for this upcoming NHL draft. But uh, he he's a, a bit smaller in, in his stature. He did win a, a World Junior a gold medal with uh, Team USA uh, not very long ago, but he says, uh, uh, Minutian took huge strides in his game last year to become an impactful two-way defender on the national program's blue line. At the start of the year, there were real questions about where he processed and read the game and his play uh, play selection decision-making. Uh, but uh, he's mentioned that his plays become more decisive. He's confident and consistent games or has consistency in all areas of his game. So uh, I, you, you really love to hear something like that. His biggest asset, and this, this is the, the big key here, his biggest asset is his four way mobility and the way it allows him to escape pressure, lead entries and exits, lead entries and exits right there is all I need to know. And that's a good sign. Where do the stars lack on their defensive personnel? Mobility and speed. They struggle 
to carry the puck out of their own zone from players not named Miro Haskin and, and Thomas Harley. So I think that is a really, really good sign that the Stars have someone like Kairou, Minutian, some of these guys that are mobile and can lead breakouts with their feet being mobile. Talk about helping your penalty kill out or seeing with Hockenpah and Lundell really struggling in their own zone. Suter, they just do not have the foot speed anymore. The Stars need some of that more foot speed. And look, we're still a few years away from maybe someone like Kairou or Minutian, who's only 18, from having an impact on the Dallas Stars. And there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. There's a lot of stuff that can go right moving forward. So not saying they're going to be up with the Stars next season and having a great impact, but it's nice to know that the Stars do have some depth in their uh, defensive uh, uh, defensive personnel coming up. And they, they've drafted pretty heavily defensively, I feel like, recently as well. Plus, they just have a really great track record <laughs> in drafting. I mean, they've hit on a lot. It's, it's, it's a guessing game in a lot of ways. It really is. You never know. Um, but it's just, it, it's good to see that they do have some of this coming up. Uh, one, one position they don't have a ton of depth in is, uh, is their goaltending. Uh, but uh, Remy Poirier comes in at number eight uh, at 22 years old. He says, Poirier is a goalie who I was kind of meh on <laughs> uh, earlier in his draft process, but uh, he's liked what he's seen from his viewings. He's right there with Matt Murray uh, for me in the tandem, and he's three years younger. I don't think his ceiling is as high, but he's good organizational depth which uh, at this point is good because who knows what Scott Wedgwood is going to get offered come next season. Do you want to keep him around? If not, then you need to have someone to back up Jake Ottinger because we already know they want to be cautious with him. They want to make sure he's well-rested. They don't want to overtax him. So the Stars need two goalies. And for the most part, that's just the way it is in the National Hockey League, the modern-day NHL, too. And, and it's become a real, real fad now that you have three. <laughs> the the goaltending carousel. So uh, the, the stars really, really need that help where they can get it. And I think Matt Murray has shown, I mean, I know he only played in one game, but it was a shutout uh, against a very, very lackluster Minnesota team. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think he showed that they can trust him at least to, for a few spot starts. I don't know if he's going to be an excellent backup goalie. Is he going to be Wedgwood good? Um, but you don't know. You, you don't know. There's uh, still a lot of things to play out. So there's a, a touch of the Dallas Stars prospect pool. Thought it would be fun to dive into that a bit and to hear some words from others that are really diving into the situation. I'm not going to sit here and say I've studied tape uh, of, <laughs> of all these guys constantly. Um, I have watched a few of them, uh, uh, of course, so I'll give my thoughts on there. But, uh, uh, of course, I don't have a, a scout mindset, so if I can provide you with some sources of these guys that do it for a living, I think that's very, very, very good. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's something to chew on, too, uh, because it's always fun to think about the future and what could be, especially in the near future with some of the top talent that the stars have in their organization. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this episode though. The Carolina hurricanes, the stars take it on the hurricanes tonight at the American airlines center. Let's preview tonight's contest in just a moment. Today's episode of locked on stars is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. The NBA is right in the thick of things, the Dallas Mavericks made a very, very interesting trade to acquire P.J. Washington. The trade deadline may have been overshadowed by the big game, but a lot of moves, a lot of mobility in the NBA in general. So you get stars and new places all the time. Go ahead and make some money watching the NBA 
watching the playoff push as well. Quick bets, live uh, same game parlays, and you can win a lot of money plus new customers. As I mentioned, get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's a no-brainer. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Be sure to check out Locked On Sports today. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. You can also find it on Amazon Fire TV as well. Covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to YouTube, find Locked On Sports today, or on Amazon Fire TV. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on Locked On Stars. Follow me on Twitter, the Joy's Jet 19 Follow Locked On Stars on Twitter as well. Just throwing stuff out there constantly. Very, very excited, though, for this top 10 matchup within the National Hockey League tonight. The Dallas Stars versus the Carolina Hurricanes. You can catch the game on Sirius XM as well. Catch the hometown broadcast, Sirius XM, on the SXM app. Just search Stars, and you can find it there. So, the Carolina Hurricanes have gone on a very, very nice run recently. They're 30-16-5. and five. They have 65 points. They're second in the Metro Division. Coming off a 1-0 win over the New Jersey Devils. And I love the style they play. Rod Brindamore, their head coach, just embodies everything that the Carolina Hurricanes are. They're tough. They're gritty. They never, never stop moving. They buzz around, and they're just fun. They got some really, really cool talent, like Sebastian Ajo, probably one of the guys you can throw up there as one of the most underrated hockey players in the National Hockey League. Their power play has been superb this season. Their PK is really good, too. Their power play, though, 27%. 47% power play goals this season. Usually their success comes down to that goaltending position (laughs) as the majority of teams do. So they've struggled to find a real steady present in that they've gone to uh, uh, anti Ranta. Uh, Frederick Anderson got hurt early in the year. So they're they're having some trouble uh, finding kind of a, a strong presence, but they're getting a great, great, Great stretch from, uh, I believe it's pronounced Kodakov. I, I I apologize if I'm completely butchering that, but he's 13, 8, and 3 this season. 903 save percentage, 2.50 goals against average. He's just 24 years old of age. So he's really young and he's put together a really, really nice season for them along with Ranta to uh, Ranta, excuse me, to, to kind of uh, mosey their way back into some form because they, they were, they were floating there just kind of hovering around for a bit, but they played some of their best hockey leading in to the, uh, to the all-star break. As I mentioned, I'll have 57 points this season. Uh, Seth Jarvis is a guy that's really having a great season. Uh, had a, a pretty pretty good rookie campaign uh, a year ago, but now he has 40 points, 16 goals uh, as a 21-year-old. As a uh, Natchez is really, really fun to watch too at 35. Just a lot of guys that are just so solid. They're not big names, so to speak, but... Uh, Really, really, really fun hockey team. Um, but I, I want to touch on this and how important the start is going to be for the Dallas Stars. They haven't been a phenomenal first period team this season. It's well documented. Their second periods have been really good for Dallas. If you take a look at their uh, goal differential, so they've scored 64 goals in the second period. 42 uh, has been scored by their opponents. So it's a plus 22 goal differential in the middle period. But I want to take you to this first period. On the road, the Carolina Hurricanes have not fared very well away from their own barn in first periods. 21 goals. They've gotten outscored 26 to 21 in first periods. The Stars, even though they haven't been a phenomenal first period team, are 31, uh, have outscored their opponents 31 to 28 at home. The start of this game is going to be so, so huge. They need to get to their game fast, find a way 
to get shots on net, play some in the offensive zone, get some really good ozone time, and not be reeling in that first 10 minutes. You get that a lot coming off a three-game road trip like we just saw. You come back home and you kind of lay an egg in that first game. It's really important for them to be on their toes. I think if the Stars are forcing the issue in the first 10, they're going to have a really, really good chance to win the game. I I just feel like the start is going to be so, so important. That way, Otter is not reeling. Otter is not taking on water. They're playing good in front of him, limiting Carolina's chances. And if they get up and play on their toes a bit in that first period, I think the Stars can really, really take advantage uh, of a Carolina team uh, that uh, has not played with a lead a ton uh, on the, the road this season. And if you take a look at their numbers on the road, they're 13, 10 and one, which is okay, but uh, they've been much better at home. They are seven, three in their last 10. So they're playing some of their best hockey. This is one of those measuring stick games as well for the Dallas stars. And I think it's great. I love the way these two teams play. I talked, uh, I talked about it yesterday, just kind of the styles seem to clash perfectly. Uh, and, uh, they're, they're kind of similar where they, they've scored a ton. They're both top 10 offenses in the national hockey league. Carolina has been better defensively, but I think with Otter finding his rhythm, the stars are going to creep back up into the top 10, I hope. And these two teams I think are just phenomenal. And I would love to see them play against each other in the playoffs, if you know what I mean, <laughs> uh, because that would mean good things for the Dallas Stars. So should be a really, really fun game tonight. Please let me know how excited you are. Who is going to be a factor? What key do you have for the Dallas Stars in order to get a victory? Now, let's talk about one player. Who is your shooting star for tonight's game against the Hurricanes? Get your picks in. I feel like I was on a heater in the month of January. And out of out of all-star break, I did hit the Ottinger pick in Buffalo. He was phenomenal. So maybe I can sprinkle some fairy dust on whoever I choose. And you have to find out in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is also brought to you by Sleeper. We're right around the corner from the trade deadline, Stars fans. There's been a ton of ups and downs, but regardless of where the Stars are in the current standings, they're first place in the Central Division, by the way. I want to remind you, you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contest. All you have to do is pick the studs of the National Hockey League. You have your McDavid's, your Crosby's, Ovechkin, who's finding his goal-scoring touch recently, and record more or less on sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, even saves if you want to go with Jake Ottinger. Seems like he may have a big night tonight against Carolina. And if you correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats, you can win a hundred times your bet on sleeper. You heard me correctly. Stars fans a hundred times your bet playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper. So start paying attention and nail those picks. So you can start winning big use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a hundred dollars match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and location availability. Okay. I love, I love, I love, I'll say it again. I love my shooting star pick for tonight because I don't know if I've ever chosen him throughout this season. And that is a disservice to this man. <laughs> it is an absolute disservice to Rope Hints. Rope Hints, my finish galloping, beautiful center iceman. I'm going with Rope Hints tonight to be the shooting star. Feels like this is just a perfect game for him. He's got another fin he's going right up against and Sebastian Ajo. It's time for him to have a really, really good night. 50 games this season. He has 48 points. Has done a ton out of the all-star break. 
So I really, really like Rope, hence just a couple of points in his last five games. He was on that tear coming into the All-Star uh, weekend. It just feels like this is a, t- a moment for him to have a huge game against a really, really steady opponent. The Stars are going to need to use his speed to generate some chances, especially off the rush. He's been so good. We'll see what the lines look like tonight. Does Pete DeBoer go back to Rope? Robertson and Pavelski. Maybe he wants to go back to the Johnston, uh, the the Young Guns line, because he's really shuffled around recently. So it, it, intriguing to see what the uh, the trios and combinations will be for tonight, since uh, they need to get Pavelski going as well. So Rope Hints, I believe it's the first time I picked him, and that's a disservice. I apologize to you, Rope Hints, my shooting star tonight. Hopefully, leading the Stars to a victory. Should be a good one. Drop your predictions in the comments below. I'm not going to predict because I almost always predict a win. Okay. I like to be positive here. And when the stars should win, I predict like, Oh yeah, they're going to cruise to victory. And it ends up being what we watched in Montreal the other night. So (laughs) I will spare that, uh, uh, that uh, prediction for you today. I hope you're having a wonder, wonderful week. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Enjoy Stars Hockey tonight. The first game back post-All-Star break at the American Airlines Center. Can't wait to see if that place is hopping. I bet it will. The the AAC, the Stars crowd, has been just so, so phenomenal this season, by the way. Man, everybody seems to be buying in, too, right now because the Cowboys disappoint per usual. It's time to hop on board and get ready for this ride. So go ahead. Hop on board. If you're coming over from the Cowboys season, welcome. We're ready to rock and roll, baby. Let's have some fun. We'll, of course, break down the game tomorrow. We'll talk about all the must-talks, the must-topics, whatever. The must-talk topics is how I'm going to put it. And, yeah, we're going to have a good week. Have a great rest of your day. I'll be back tomorrow, and I can't wait to see you then. So long, Stars fans.